Hi everyone, welcome to Plastic on Plastics. Uh, my name is Tristan and today I'm going to be talking about uh, your comments and answering all of your questions regarding plastics. If you have any questions about plastics, leave it in this video below or just leave it on any of one of our videos and I'll probably try to get to it. Um, so let's get started here. Why do PET bottles come with HDPE caps and a ring? Doesn't it make it harder to recycle? This is a very interesting and good observation. So yes, most bottles, so I have a water bottle here, most bottles are made with uh, PET, so polyethylene terephthalate, and then the cap is actually not HDPE, often it's polypropylene. So the reason why um, it is is just because it's easier to say the least. So think about how each uh, item is here is, is manufactured. This bottle here is gonna be uh, blow molded. Right, and while this cap is most likely gonna be injection molded. They also have to have different properties. Well, this PET bottle here needs to be thin and you know strong and lightweight and not leach any flavors into the water or the, or the soda. Those metrics aren't really required for the cap. The cap needs to be uh, really strong to be twist and turned easily, to be stamped on top of the bottle easily, um, and needs to be able to break with the ring below so you can see that it is not an open bottle. So each Plastic has quite different um, reasons to be there and therefore different properties are needed within the plastic. So that's why they have to use a different uh, plastic cap than the bottle that they're using. That being said, is it easy to recycle? The answer is yes. It would be easier if they were both made out of the same plastic. However, bottle recycling is so widespread that it is generally easy and the system is there and the infrastructure is there within most municipalities to do it. So PET is the most recycled type of plastic due to bottles. Now, how does it work? Well, you take a bottle, you don't have to remove the cap. I know some countries, um, in some very small towns, I know some towns in Japan, in the mountains, they like each consumer will sort the plastic individually. But here in Canada and the US, um, I'm assuming most of North America, uh, these bottles get all grinded down to one big pile of ground plastic and then they get put into a sink float tank uh, where the polypropylene and the PET is uh, separated because one floats, one sinks. So because of the different densities, uh, it's easy to separate and then you can take the polypropylene, use it, recycle it, and the PET and recycle that. In regards to bubble deck, is it possible to use cubic geometry? So no is the answer. Bubble deck is the technology where you put voided um, spheres into concrete slabs to make them lighter. And you will see that with uh, bubble deck, it's circle spheres. Uh, the reason why is because something like a sphere or an egg shaped design doesn't have any pain points. So it can be squished with a ton of force on all even sides, which is the concrete, and it's not gonna break. Uh, something like a cube would basically have weak points. So the concrete on top of it would press down and then you would have a weak point and then your voided system would probably crack. Uh, another problem with that is that when you're shaking the concrete, so you pour the concrete, you shake the concrete so that all the concrete can go everywhere it needs to within the slab, that's called the vibration. If the void system is not a circle, it's a much harder for the cement to go underneath uh, those flat surfaces. Um, one other note, uh, so some of uh, the competitors of Bubble Deck use different designs that aren't perfect spheres. Um, so they'll use a design that looks kind of like a curling puck, again, with the flat bottom and, and top. Um, the reason why they do that is not because they've created some sort of much better design that works better than Bubble Deck, but because they don't have the patents to have a circle. So Bubble Deck is the only one with the patents to have a circle in the concrete slab. Um, every other competitor basically can't get the perfect circle, which is obviously the perfect geometric shape for bubble deck. Is ABS in machines such as vacuums made with injection molding? So most likely, and it's, I would, don't know if it's usually ABS. I would assume that most uh, housings within things like vacuum machines would probably be more like polypropylene, but they do heat up. So maybe something I don't know about plastic and maybe ABS is better, but it probably will be injection molded. How much is one ton of polypropylene worth? So right now I think polypropylene is sitting at uh, $1,200 US dollars per ton. Uh, it does fluctuate just like gas and petrol because 
plastic is a petroleum based product so it just ha has the same fluctuations interesting note with plastic though is you have the virgin plastic material and then you also have pcr or recycled plastic material so both are fluctuating at different rates generally the virgin plastic material is going to be fluctuating less um, in terms of a long period of time so it's easier to calculate how much cost it is uh, it's going to be for your inventory and stuff like that um, that's why a lot of companies choose not to use recycled material even though most consumers would want them to use recycled material it's a little harder to gauge what those prices are going to be um, also with recycled material generally it tends to be a little more expensive it does fluctuate between being more expensive and cheap but generally it's going to be uh, more expensive so a lot of companies do want to use virgin materials that being said there are different materials recycled materials that you can implement into your product that to make things cheaper so for example crumb rubber from car tires is a really wide known source that you can actually injection mold um, into your product. So that's what we do at, at Plastic on Plastic. And the cost for crumb rubber is I believe half of what a virgin plastic like polypropylene would be. Um, so you can reduce your, uh, your product by a significant portion if you wanna use some recycled product like crumb rubber. Is it safe to store food in polypropylene? So yes, but I wouldn't store food into anything that's polypropylene like if you just have a random polypropylene container that was used for i don't know paint i wouldn't put your sandwich in it uh, that being said a lot of uh, to-go boxes that you get at restaurants are going to be made out of polypropylene it's very widely used for food so yes generally it's good for food we make polypropylene injection molding crates and they are breakable under a normal load on the other hand hdpe crates are flexible why are they unbreakable okay so this person makes crates, they want to know why their HDPE crate is stronger than their polypropylene crate. To simply put it, it's just stronger, um, especially, I guess, for their application. Just like how on most applications, you're going to have steel is going to be stronger than aluminum. HDPE is one of the strongest plastics, uh, especially for the price, and it's going to be stronger, I guess, in their application than polypropylene. HDPE is, can be very flexible, which is probably the reason why their polypropylene crates are breaking they're probably twisting them turning them or putting them on some sort of system that's bending them in some sort or jostling them in some way and it could be the flexibility of hdpe that allows it not to break so think about a two ounce milk jug uh, milk jugs are made out of hdpe so a two ounce milk jug is carrying a gallon of milk so that's a huge strength to weight ratio right and then so say you pour out all the milk out of your milk jug um, and stomp on that milk crate, what's gonna happen? It's not gonna break, it's not gonna shred, it's very malleable, it's just gonna kinda squish. Some plastics like uh, polystyrene, for example, the plastic that makes uh, styrofoam, is just gonna break into a lot of pieces. That's not what HDPE does, it's very strong, and that's just simply the answer why those crates are stronger. Next question. Does HDPE withstand the sub-zero temperature for a long period of time? Well, I mean, depends how sub-zero you're talking. Uh, HDPE will withstand sub-zero temperature. It can go all the way down to, I believe, negative 40 or 45 degrees Celsius and as high as uh, 120 degrees Celsius. HDPE uh, is used for a lot of outdoor water tanks, um, water tanks that are going to be remote areas. And so it's very tough and very uh, resilient to different temperature fluctuations. Um, so I'm not sure what the application you need for the sub-zero temperature, but yes, unless it's going to be some crazy cold temperature, uh, HDPE is probably going to be fine. That's it for this uh, video. Leave a comment, leave a question if you have one, and uh, hope to see you in the next video. Cheers.